Alright, so how's everybody doing out there in YouTube land? This is my 89 Ford F-150. And I hope this video will upload here, but... I can't find hardly no videos on any of this. It's only a couple on it, but... On store short, this had the 306 cylinder in this truck. With the 5 speed. You can tell it's got the 5 speed in it. it had the 4.9. There's a lot of the intake, valve cover, and all the other crap that went to it. But, uh... This really is not a hard swap, honestly. It's really not. Alright, so here's our motor mounts here. This is the 306 cylinder mounts. And behind it, I ordered 302 mounts. Those are supposed to work with the 302 and also the 351 Windsor. They're pretty much the same thing. So all you got to do is they got four bolts on it. You got one there, one there, and there, and there. And this side head is four, this side has three. One there, one there, and one there. What you want to do, take in, uh, you have to get your wrench. I had to get me a wrench to reach up underneath there, but uh, here are some of the bolts to it. But you, the nice thing about it, you want to be careful with these bolts here because you're going to reuse these. So when you want to spot from a 306 cylinder, because it's, you know, it's either old, worn out, or, you know, you just want a 302 or a 351 Windsor, either way. What you do here is you want to save these bolts. Don't round them off. Be real careful with them taking them out. Spray them down with PB Blaster. Do whatever you got to do. Just get them out without messing them up. Don't mess the threads up. You're going to need them. So we'll leave and lay these to the side. If you do mess them up, you can go to the hardware store. You can get you a grade 8 nut and bolt. Ain't really that big a deal, but you want to try and get them out without messing them up. So what you're gonna do is on these new motor mounts here, the nice thing about it is these 302 slash 351 Windsor motor mounts, we'll call it. This side also has four. This side also has three. And the nice thing about it is when you unbolt this side, you can reuse the bolts and the nuts on that new mount. So this one exactly has four. The new mount has exactly four. Same way with this side. You take the bolts nuts out. This side has three. The new mount has three. So you're going to reuse them. So that's the nice thing about it. So you get them out without messing them up. You're going to reuse them. So once you get all that out, these mounts are really not that bad to take out. I use the impact. Just better off doing it like that. The actual bolt right here is a 15. So it's a 15 millimeter bolt with an 18 millimeter uh, nut on it. They're metric, unfortunately but it is what it is i got a wrench and i had to reach up under there it's a little bit of a trick to it but you kind of got to reach up underneath there to kind of hold it so when you zip them off there it's just easier but a couple of them I had to get my breaker bar out there and break them loose but a couple on the bottom are a little bit tight but the rest of them came off pretty easy they weren't too bad but best thing to do i would just use impact if you can use impact you're careful with it you know you can zip them out no problem that's what i did that's the route i went i took my breaker bar broke them all loose first and then i used my impact on them because them bolts are pretty tight so you want to get them out of the way once you get them out you lift the motor mounts up here these are different do whatever you want with them you can sell them scrap them throw them away but the stuff started getting rare now i would just encourage uh just keep them for now. You never know. Maybe sell them or something. But I, I just would encourage uh, keeping them. So lift that side out. Lift this side out right here. Now they're out of the way. Now you got all that clearance right there. Now once you get them out of the way, what you want to do. Now these are mocked up right now. And I could find no good videos on this on YouTube. But uh, there's one on there talk about grinding rivets off and they notched it out and did all that crap. I'm not going to do all that. I'm going to do it the right way. Do it the way I think it ought to be done. And you don't have to do nothing to your frame. You ain't got to drill no bolt holes or nothing like that. The nice thing about this truck, this is a two-wheel drive now. And I bought these mounts from LMC Truck. They're supposed to be, I believe, 84 to 96. And you got to be careful about these mounts. Make sure they're for a two-wheel drive because the two-wheel drive and the four-wheel drive, I'm not for sure, for sure on it, but I'm pretty sure they're different. I'm pretty sure the height-wise is different. But uh, I had bought these. The best thing to do is if you can go to a salvage yard and get them, that's good. But 
I'm telling you, it's just better off. Just if you can get new ones, get new ones. Because all you got to do is just bulk them on. You ain't going to be fighting, going out to the salvage yard, taking them off and fighting with them. But it's better if you can get original ones, though, because they'll fit right. This side unbolts. This side has three vivets. This one actually has three rivets on it. Now, I haven't gotten these out yet, but it's a rivet right here. Get a close up of this here. It's just out of the way. This one was just sitting in here. Uh, so we'll sit that mount down there. And uh, you got three rivets right here. This one's already out. We don't need to worry about that one. But these two right here, we're going to have to get out. So we're going to get a grinder, get them out. And then we're going to get a grade 8 bolt nut and some lock uh, washers on there. And bolt that back up. But it's just not going to hurt nothing. Ain't going to hurt nothing at all. That's the two rivets they're talking about. Now the four drives, I don't know if they got three or not, but this truck, it's a two wheel drive, it's got two. So you're going to grind these two out and uh, get two bolts and two nuts, get you some grade eight hardware there, bolt them up. Because you're, you're going to need them for these two holes down here. These two holes are going to need it. Part number for this is 45-0384. The part number for this is the same thing. It's 4503. 85 so you want to make sure one is 0384 and 0385 now i couldn't find no information or nothing on the internet about these but luckily luckily i don't know how long they're going to sell them i think it's actually a new thing but uh lmc truck sells these mounts and they were shipped to my door i'm in virginia here they're shipped to my door for 147 bucks so i bought them it's just saves a lot of time that way I can come in here and mock them up. I ain't got to go to the salvage yard, be fighting, trying to get them off and all that stuff and be laying in all the weeds. So, I went that route. I bought new ones. That way all I'm going to do is bolt them up. It's easier that way. Now, you got to do nothing to your frame because guess what? These two bolt holes right here are already here. So, we got them two here. And then also, if you look through our frame right here and get a good close-up of it, the other ones are in there as well. Now, this is just mocked up. You know, I just put it, put them on a couple by threads. But look at this frame right here. I hope it'll catch it. But let's see. Come on now. Focus, focus, focus. There you are. All right. There's one right here. And there's one right here. These bolt holes are already drilled. So you got to worry about it. So it, basically, this is pretty much, might as well say, a direct bolt swap. That's the nice thing about it. Now, this truck, I'm doing different. I'm not running the fuel injection stuff. All this clutter under the hood here, all this is going to come off. So when I get it all done, we're just going to have our heater box. And all the clutter under here is going to be gone. We'll have a nice clean inner fender. And uh, might, I had to do a little wiring setup here, but I'm not sure if I'm going to run this old style solenoid. Might go to the new style starter. It's got the solenoid actually mounted on the bottom. But uh, we'll figure that out as we go. But these fuel lines here, we're not going to run into that. All this stuff, all the EFI stuff, I'm taking completely off. And I'm going to either sell it or either uh, probably throw half of it away. I'll go through and see what's actually good and what's not. But these fuel lines, we're not going to use. We're taking all that off. We're going to go get a roll of 3 8 fuel line. And we're going to bend it up. And we're going to run it from the tank up here because our fuel pump's going to be right in here and the nice thing too i'm going to do this the correct way i got an older block and it's got the mechanical fuel pump in it and the way i want to do this i'm not running an electric fuel pump or any of that stuff so we got plenty of room i've been looking at pictures so there's plenty of room to make, put a mechanical fuel pump on here so we can put a mechanical fuel pump on a late model truck we got plenty of clearance i mean look at all the clearance we got here I mean, our oil filter is going to be right here and somewhere in this location. And our fuel pump's going to be like right in here. Because I was kind of worried it's going to be up next to our steering box, but no. We ain't got to worry about that. It actually might be a little further back, more in this area. But we got plenty of clearance regardless. But so we're going to put a mechanical fuel pump back on it. We're taking all these fuel lines off. All that's coming off. I'm going to get a roll of 3 8 fuel line. I'm going to bend up a complete new line from the tank up to here and then of course we'll tie that in from our pump to our carburetor and the rest of that to finish it off but uh we're going to run a mechanical fuel pump as far as the 
ignition system we're going to, i'm gonna get an hei distributor it's basically all it is is a chevrolet distributor but the bottom base of it is machined for a small block ford but uh i'm gonna go that route you know because it's just easier that way all i gotta do is run a hot wire to it and you're done you just need a hot wire turn the key on it's hot you turn the key off it's no power so that's what we're going to do and uh we're actually i'm not going to run any of the new style pulley setup we should have plenty of clearance putting the radiator support in the fan so i don't think we're going to worry about that but we're going to go back to the old v-belt setup pretty much the way this is going to be set up is if you look at pictures of like a 70s model forward or even some of the 60s they really didn't some of, some of them i don't think had 302s but some of them i believe didn't have 302s but uh basically all i'm gonna do is we're going completely back old school on it the only thing will be new is we'll have the five speed so that'll be a huge benefit we'll have the overdrive now that's not going to affect none of that the five speed work just fine that doesn't need a computer to work i mean it's common sense it's five speed doesn't need a computer to work and plus the uh, speedometer cable is uh mechanically driven it's not electronic or nothing like that it's still mechanically driven on this truck now if you get up into the 92 and 96s all them they have the uh their uh digital miles on them and all that they have the newer style cluster and all that which i mean i kind of like it it's okay but i actually like this dash better in my opinion i like the way the this dash is and i love this truck because this is a non-ac truck so this truck it's going to be really clean looking under the hood once i get rid of all this crap right here get rid of this air box and clean all this wiring up it's going to be pretty nice gonna be really really nice we're gonna have all kinds of room and plus we got the benefit of the overdrive and plus it's just we ain't gotta worry about none of the ac stuff it's gonna be a really easy swap and as far as the power steering line the only thing i was thinking about on there is that might be a little different fitting because i'm gonna go back to the v-belt setup and uh i had to figure out if this is the same fitting is like some of the late 70s f-150s with the 302s i don't think it is it's actually a little bit bigger fitting but we either might be able to get adapter for that which i really prefer not to do or either uh i think the best way to do it i'm gonna probably just take it up and get a whole new line made up for it because i want to i want to keep everything under here clean i don't want everything to look you know trashy looking i want it to look clean like it's never been messed with basically when you open the hood everything's gonna look like it's from like the 60s 70 era but you know of course we got the new style truck but i'm taking the fuel pump out of the tank and i'm gonna go through the wire harness on it because really all we need truthfully is we just need to run the gauge in the dash that's all we need we just need the fuel gauge to work we don't need the fuel pump in the tank and all that stuff because we're going to run a mechanical on here now we're going back completely old school we just need to run this gauge on here so i think the way i'm going to do it I'm gonna go through the wiring harness on it, figure out which wire is actually running to make that gauge work. And then we're gonna just delete all the other wiring on it that we can delete. And then uh, I'm just gonna use the sending unit. So I'm gonna pull the whole sending unit out. I'm pretty sure this truck has the new style electric fuel pump in the tank. So all we're gonna do is take the fuel pump off of the sending unit and basically reinstall the sending unit. So we're gonna simplify that, and then I'm gonna get a piece of 3 8 fuel line run from this tank back here all the way up. And then we'll tie that into your fuel pump on the block here. And uh, of course, tie it into our carburetor. So that'll take care of that issue. That way we ain't gonna deal with none of this junk. So I wanna clean this all up. We're gonna get rid of this fuel filter down here. And uh, cause when I bend the line up, I'm gonna get rid of that. Cause I don't like the sight of that. When you open the hood, you see that. I don't like that. We're actually going to take in, uh, we're going to move that further on back down the frame reel. That way you don't see it, just to keep the clean look. I like kind of picky about that, but I haven't decided. I got the other 302 for this truck, and I haven't quite decided what cam I'm going to put in it. I don't want nothing crazy. I'm actually leaning towards like a solid lifter cam because I'm definitely going, we're definitely going to go to 411, either 411 or 456 gears. I'm kind of starting to lean more towards the 456 gears. We're definitely going to put a lower gear ratio in it. So we'll have the lower gear ratio, which really ain't going to matter too awful much because we got the overdrive, so that'll help a little bit. I mean, might be uh, 
a little higher RPM when you go on the interstate at 70, but I don't care. It ain't going to hurt it. It's not going to be that crazy. So we'll either go with the 411, 456. So I want to change the gear ratio up right now. So I believe it has like 308 gears, like granny gears pretty much. So we're going to change the gear ratio up. Yeah, and I got the other 302 I'm going to put in here. It's actually, uh, it's either 83 or 84 302. I want to say it's 83. And uh, we'll have to change the pan on it and, of course, the oil pump pickup. But other than that, I don't think we'll have to change too much. And uh, we'll have the newer style dipstick. That block set up for the driver's side dipstick. So we'll have that. And then i got to get a timing cover that has the mechanical fuel pump but doesn't have the hole for the dipstick in the front. And they do have them. I looked at a lot of trucks in the salvage yards. You can get them. They do have them. So uh, it's like the early 80s or like that. They got the driver's side dipstick. And it actually has the provision to drill it, but it doesn't have the hole where. So we're, I want to run that timing cover because it's cleaner. Because we can run our mechanical fuel pump like we need. And then not have to worry about the dipstick in the uh, front of the timing cover. So we'll have the new style... Uh, dipstick set up on this as well but uh it's really not that hard to swap this out that one's a direct bolt up once you take them take all uh four five six seven five six seven yeah we got seven bolts here once you take all them seven bolts out get your mounts out of the way i mean it's really not that hard the only thing you gotta be careful about there's a little bracket down here and let me get a close-up of this here all right, so here's a little bracket here. This All this does is hold this distribution block here for the brake lines. Ah, uh, come on now. Trying to cover that so it ain't glaring. But it's a bracket here. There we go. There it is. This is a 15 and an 18. So the bolt is a 15, the nut's an 18. You want to take that out and get this bracket out of the way because you're going to need that bolt hole right there to get this uh, mount up in here bolted up because it actually uses these two bolt holes. See, like I'm saying, it's already set up for a 302 or a 351. You got this bolt hole here, you got one over there. All you gotta do is take this out, put that in install our uh, mount here, and then just put your bracket and all back on it because we're going to reuse our bracket. We just need to take it off to get this installed for these two bolt holes. The only thing we really gonna have to do, honestly, the hardest thing really, it's not that hard, but these two rivets down here on our frame here, you can see them these two right here we'll grind these two out and then we'll get some grade eight bolts here and uh install them too but that's not gonna hurt nothing ain't gonna hurt nothing one bit but other than that it's really not that hard our brake line i had to tweak it just a little bit the only thing i did when i say i tweak it like that i just moved it back just a little bit the only reason i moved it back is so i could get this motor mount up under here and uh i just pushed it back on but I didn't have to do nothing. The only thing I did is just moved it back so I can get up underneath here without messing them up. So you want to be careful about that. When you take this apart, you don't twist those brake lines. So be careful about that. But it's really not that hard. It's really not. So I'm hoping this will be a really good video. A lot better than some of the other ones on there. And uh, hopefully this will help a lot of people. See, so we got, if I can get a close up of that. See, our two bolt holes are already there. There's one, there's the other. And uh, of course we got the other two up here. So I mean, it's really not that bad. All you gotta do is, to, once you get your mounts out of the way, you can reuse all your bolts and everything. It's not that hard. The only most we gotta even do is just grind these two rivets off and uh, get some bolts to put them on. And the only reason we gotta do that is so uh, our two bolt holes down here on our mount here, bolted up see here's these two we just need these two that's the only reason we gotta grind them off but I had seen somebody online had come up in here and cut this off kind of like it and they notched it out I don't like that idea or keep it on here keep its strength these are actually marked left hand of course right hand but they're brand new mounts they're $147 shipped to my door so they're really not that bad get them from LMC truck you're better off that way uh, the holes lined up really good. I was kind of surprised. I was worried that they were going to be off a little bit, but no, they really weren't. This was just mocked up here, but by the time we tighten everything up, we ain't got a word. But uh, that's the only place I can find them. If you can get a good original set, 
you know that's i'm all for it you know but i bought repops because i didn't feel like going to the salvage yard and crawling all over the ground trying to fight getting them off but these two rivets now on your other truck here you will have to grind these off because these are actually rivet to this bracket here so if you find a uh, true 302 truck you will have to grind them off to get this mount off and of course you got two bolts up here and then one right here so we'll actually have to get two extra bolts for this side because this side actually had three so that's one two three so we'll have one two right there on that side so I wouldn't drop them out there and then we'll have three right here and then we'll have to actually get three more that's not a big deal these mounts they won't swap with either side so you gotta have left hand and right hand so make sure you get both because you gotta have them they're completely different so they won't interchange either one uh one side fits one side only the other side fits one side only so we'll get our bracket out here you gotta be careful with that with our brake lines we'll get this out we'll get this mount bolted up here and get our rivets ground off so we can get this all bolted up flush and i think other than that we'll be just about ready to We'll clean this up a little bit. We'll be about ready to set the motor in. Before I set it in, I'm going to replace this slave cylinder here. I'm going to get a flywheel and a clutch kit. I'm just going to get a regular flywheel and a clutch kit for like an 89 302. And uh, they actually make a harmonic balancer. I found one that I need. They make it for either a 28 ounce, the old style balancer is a 28 ounce. The newer style is a 50 ounce. So you can buy that balancer and you can change it to either way you want it. You can actually take the weight out and bolt it up and make it a 28 or a 50. And the nice thing about it is it's actually drilled for both bolt patterns to run either the serpentine belt setup, like on the newer style late model trucks, or you run the V-belt. But I personally am going to run the V-belt because it's just a lot more. It saves a lot of money that way. And I got just about all the pulleys anyway. But I'm going to run like, I'm going to get all the pulleys for like, the only thing I really need is the uh, harm out bouncer pulley. But uh, I'm going to get all that from like a 70s F 150 and put on here. And I should have plenty of clearance. So between the fan and the radiator, should be plenty of clearance. I don't think I'm going to have to worry. So hopefully we'll be good. Of course, you can uh, actually take your uh, motor mount here, you know. If you had a lot of problems with your 306 cylinder like I did, this thing you do is uh, do this right here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.